I think when somebody gets cancer, the first thing they say is, uh, I just want my old life back. I just want to be the same that, that I used to be. And, and my experience with Meg is such that there is no the same as you used to be because the experience of the illness of necessity changes your basic experience and therefore changes the way you respond to things. So my life has changed primarily because Meg has changed. Remember, we're not talking a one-off incident with Meg. We're talking a 27-year um, illness in a whole variety of expressions. With each episode, Meg's response has changed. Meg's character has changed, not in terms of basic values, but in terms of her outlook and the way she responds. As a result, that's impacted on me, and therefore my responses of necessity have to change and be flexible. Because if they don't, and if I remain locked in and rigid, it will add difficulty and tension to the relationship. 27 years ago, as a young as a young parent, my overwhelming concern was continuing to make a living. Meg's health was such that the family had a big enough problem with, without me not being able to make a living and adding a financial burden to the problem we had. So the priority that we had was firstly the kids, secondly continue making a living and without meaning to sound crass, Meg was third cab off the rank. She was looked after medically. Uh, but I needed to make sure that we had an environment that was stable in particular for the kids. Was it a, um, a difficult time? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, added to that was the people were ringing, uh, which was, which in, in retrospect was wonderful. People were ringing, how's Meg and so on. And you would come out with a, a, a almost dinner party conversation. Yeah, she's fine, she's recovering, all's well. You didn't really want to go into detail. Um, and, and yeah, I learnt then how to, um, how to respond to people who are asking inappropriate questions. Help can be either um, with, with expertise in terms of therapists or it can be the ear of, of a friend who knows how to listen without attempting to prescribe, who can actually actively listen without making foolish suggestions, who just knows that to be a friend, keep your mouth shut, listen and be there. That's rare. Um, it was certainly rare in my experience. Um, I had maybe one person who, who knew how to respond. Remember, I'm, I'm talking as, um, as a function of wisdom, the wisdom of, of retrospectivity, looking back over a long period of time. The other style of help is the therapeutic help. Along the way, I sought it once um, when I knew that I needed help, and that was um, with Meg's diagnosis of breast cancer. With breast removal, it caused me, it can, I found it very confronting. Um, it, I found it very confronting as a partner because it changed that which I desired. Um, a, a partner's physical appearance and the way a partner presents themselves is very much part of the desire of the respondent of the relationship. When that changes, it's physically confronting, obviously not just for the person involved, but also for the partner, because it impacts on the physical dimension between the partner and the patient. Quite frankly, humour is an aspect that was a wonderful defence. Um, we used to joke uh, about people having the cancer look and how's Meg and that their inflection, their vocal inflection would drop and at times I played with it I'd say yeah, she's not dead she's just around the corner you can actually ask her how she is um, because people would adopt a kind of funereal um, reaction to, to, the, to the concept of cancer it was a very different time then survival rates possibly weren't as high um, Our children tell the best cancer jokes. Yeah, and we used humour. We used humour as a great defence uh, and it was effective. At times shockingly so, but it was effective. Mm.